All right guys, before we start the vlog, I know every week I plug the Vibrastrate iron and I talk about giving one away if you subscribe to the channel. So what I'm gonna do today is give away a Vibrastrate iron to one lucky subscriber. And that subscriber this week is Jessica Nicole right there. So if that is you, Jessica, then email contest at freesaloneducation.com. We'll ship you out your iron. And if you guys want a chance to win an iron as well, then make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and you could have a chance to win. Make sure you're commenting so I see you. And thank you guys so much for the support. Let's get started with the video. Here we go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog number 98. We're getting so close to 100. That was a big goal for me. I started the vlog last February. So since last February, I've done 100 vlog step-by-step -step videos for you guys. So it's pretty cool. Today, what we're gonna focus on is hair color. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to color the haircut that I did in vlog number 97. So if you guys wanna go check out the haircut, you can watch that first, you can watch it after. But this is the cut that we're gonna focus on. It's a long layered haircut. So you can see um, how long it is, but also it's got a nice little kickback fringe. We did a, a three twist, we call it the three layer haircut because we did three twists on the top of the head and cut it to create all the layering. So it's a really simple haircut. Then we went in and now we added the hair color. So what I did was I added depth through the bottom and throughout the haircut as well. So I'm gonna show you a full step-by-step -step on that. And if you guys have any questions, post them in the comments below. And before you forget, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos that we have coming up in the future. We've got a lot of big plans, a lot of videos to do. So let's get started with this one. Here we go. All right guys, so we're gonna start off our sectioning. I'm using the YS Park 102 comb. It's got a nice skinny metal tail to it. So it's easy for creating those partings. And I'm gonna start by creating a nice halo section around the top, including the crown area. So I'm going about mid crown down uh, and then a little bit past the high point of the head to create that oh, oh, that circle. Now this circle would be based on the density of the hair. This mannequin has a medium density, so I do a medium sized circle. If she had a finer density of hair, I would probably do um, a little bit bigger circle. And if she had a higher density of hair, I would do a smaller circle because the higher density of the hair, this halo is gonna fall over and it might overtake the entire technique. So you wanna make sure you leave a little bit of room for that. Now I'm gonna section off the fringe area. That's my next sectioning. Basically going from parietal ridge to the edge of the eyebrow. You can kind of, uh, the thing about color that I love um, as opposed to hair cutting, hair cutting I feel very precise in. Color, I feel like there's some give, so it's more of a feeling that you get. Uh, so with that fringe area, it was a little bit more asymmetrical, but right around the edge of the eyebrow. Then I create a triangle section. This one, I didn't want to do a full triangle, so you can see I cut off the corner. Uh, that was so that I could include some of that hairline hair in there uh, and not go all the way down to the hairline. And in the back portion, I go from the crown area down to the occipital bone with a triangle piece as well. Uh, this one I didn't have to cut off because obviously there's more density in the back. Then I'm gonna create one more on the side. And again, there was more density on this side, more hair to work with. So I create that full triangle with a point leaving the hairline um, unexposed. So I don't wanna go all the way down to the hairline, all the way down to the ear, just down enough to create that triangle. The thing I love about triangles, we'll get into the color in a minute, I'm using Joico 4NA 20 volume. Uh, what I wanna do is create that depth, but why I like creating triangles in the haircut is it's a triangle is based on a diagonal. So if I'm creating a diagonal in the hair, it's gonna be a little bit softer feel. I also brought in the head sheets for this technique so that you can see it. So we're gonna create that 4NA all the way through the bottom of the haircut. My goal with this is to show depth and show that shadowing from the, the layering that we created in the cut um, that again, you guys can watch on vlog number 97 if you wanna see that cut in full. So I'm just going through painting scalp to ends 4NA. Um, I like this color because with Joyco, this is a green base to it. So it definitely cuts out a lot of those red tones that would come through in the hair color. That's, you know, basic color uh, theory. So I'm just going through softening, but adding the depth and the darkness. Then I go through in the rest of the haircut and I'm gonna add some brightness to it, some more gold tones. So I'm using more muted kind of uh, neutral tones in the bottom in the shadowing areas, and then where the sun would hit it and would really make this haircut pop, 
I use more of the golden tones. So the other thing I want you to notice as I work through it, this is something I learned uh, a long time ago, but I use my tail comb and my brush at the same time. So I use the tail comb to section instead of flipping the, the brush around, keeps my brush nice and clean. And then I go through with the comb and, and create my partings. That just allows for easier workflow and anything I can do to make coloring faster. It's, it's what I like to do because this to me is just a quick paint to accent a haircut. So what we're gonna do is finish up these sections. You can see at this point I've painted through everything and you can already see that color. The thing I like about the Joyco color, they sent me an entire box of this stuff. And I've really been enjoying working with it because of the fact that it goes on really smooth. It's not a super thick color. So even though it's permanent, it glides onto the hair really well. I get really good saturation and nice even um, feel to it when it's all done and processed. So now I'm going in with 7NG 30 volume. And the thing I, I like about the 7NG, like I said before, I wanted to add more golden uh, natural tones to the hair as well. So I don't want to just mute the hair out. It's not all about um, always going in and neutralizing everything. Hair naturally does have some warmth to it. So I wanted to go in, just paint in that NG in each of the triangle sections. So what I like about the head sheet that I did, and you guys can let me know if you like this kind of look to it, but for the hair color, I wanted to showcase exactly what I put in each section because I know we only have one camera angle with this as well. So I wanted to show you guys exactly how we're doing um, each portion of the color. So the green stands for the 4NA throughout um, this whole head sheet. And then the golden color is for our gold 7NG um, through the rest. So I wanna paint full, uh, full blown sections, the entire triangle. If you wanted a little more blend to the color, you could also foil every other um, section, take diagonal sections up the triangle and, and separate it that way, which would give you a little bit more blend to the color. I like having a little bit more of a bold statement. And these colors are in the family. They're only three shades apart. So it's not gonna be that big of a difference. If we were working with blondes, then I would definitely break it up and do more foil work throughout this triangle or even balayage these triangles as well. So you can see those tones kind of working together. I love the look of them already. I love how neutral and deep the 4NA is and then how you know kind of bright and golden you can see that 7NA coming through. So now we're going to we're going to paint the 7 and 8 through the entire fringe area. The reason I chose to do this, you could break it up as well, because I wanted to add that brightness to the face. I didn't want the dark stuff all around her face. Um, we're already going to have that in the temple area. So I just wanted to brighten it up right in the front. Most people like to see the brightest tone in the front of their hair color. So finishing up the last couple sections, again, real simple, and the color works through really nice, so I had no issues with um, the saturation. It actually goes on pretty quick and smooth. You'll see that I kind of lay each section on top of each other, so as I'm painting, um, I just allow it. I try to keep the two colors separated, but it's okay if they touch a little bit. So now this is the fun part of the color and where it could get a little tricky and why I really decided to do the head sheet is because you can see the different triangles that I did on the top. So even though we were working a circle, I kind of create almost like a backgammon board, if you guys know what that is. It's just triangles placed um, next to each other, which creates a lot of movement and dimension. It's also, this technique is great for anybody that wears their hair all different directions. So it creates a lot of blend, um, but also a lot of versatility in the color as well. So you can see all the different pieces were just kind of painting and separating them, keeping everything separated, but still allowing it to touch a little bit. Color's organic, it moves throughout the, the head, so it's okay if some of it touches and blends together. Now, if we were working with lightener, it would be a little bit different story there. So finishing up the last couple sections. And what I wanted to do is create the darkest piece right in the front because we did the lighter portion in the fringe. So um, if that was the opposite, I would probably go uh, completely change my, my formation. Um, you could even do smaller triangles on the top if you wanted to. So there's a lot of variations. I don't want to ever say this is the technique you should do on every guest. This is just a variation of something that you can create and it gives you multiple ideas to uh, kind of attack your hair colors. 
So there you go. You can see that's the end result. Now we're going to blow or we're going to let it process 30 minutes um, and then it'll be all done. So now I'm going to go in with my Bricado mousse, blow dry it. This is a great mousse because it's a nice light hold, uh, but it's, it has a real fullness to feel to it. So it gives a lot of volume, but it's not sticky, which is something I really like in a mousse. I'm going to use the Ergo paddle brush. got the Dyson blow dryer. A lot of you guys are going to ask questions about the Dyson blow dryer. I've talked about it in the other videos. I do like the blow dryer. It is pretty expensive for what it is, um, but I like the tool. It's a great conversation piece, and it works really well. Um, but I think a lot of professional blow dryers work really well. So make sure you have an ionic blow dryer, something that um, isn't going to roast the hair while it's drying it, and you'll be good to go on that. So as I'm blow drying, you can really get the blow drying technique on vlog 97 when we do the cut, but I'm just working the hair back and forth. I want to show you guys one style with this. I think I do two styles in 97 if I remember correctly. Um, and then we're going to go in with our Joyco thermal protectant spray. So when I get the hair 90% dry, sometimes 80% dry, I, I spray the thermal protectant spray in and then I finish my blow dry. Then when I go in with the iron, the hair is nice and protected and I don't have to worry about it. I love this angle because you can really see the depth of that color. You can also see the separation of those layers. It really brings it all to life. Um, it's the best part about coloring a haircut uh, and why I like to really have the idea of the cut before I do the color in my mind because I can show it off better in the end result. So I kick the bang back just to really show that brightness. Um, you can see the depth underneath. Again, you can do this multiple ways. You could break up that depth if you wanted to, but I really like the story of this color and I think it looks great. I uh, hope you guys like it. That's really the important part, but uh, you can see how it shows off the layers. That's what I like. Hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, like always, if you like the cut, then hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share this video with all of your friends out there. And if you have any questions then post them in the comments below, I love hearing your questions. And also you guys know that I love seeing if you've made it this far in the video, post that below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.